I am very happy to be able to come back. So when I have the opportunity to come back, I felt obliged to, to contribute to actually to your work because uh, recently I heard that your uh, institute has become one of the leading, uh, one of important uh, think tanks, not only in, in Ireland, but also in, in Europe. Uh, so uh, although I am not, I'm neither a negotiator for TTIP nor a real expert in international trade, uh, I still want to do something. So uh, today's uh, topic is uh, China's response to transatlantic trade and investment partnership negotiations. Uh, my talk will consist of four five parts and background uh, and what TTIP is and uh, uh, maybe another parallel project or proposal for uh, FTA dominated by US Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership. Uh, also some views from Chinese scholars, Chinese think tanks, and also some policies of Chinese government to respond. Although these policies uh, are not solely for, uh, not solely as a response to, to this uh, TTIP, the development, but uh, maybe TTIP is also one of the factors that lead to these, these changes. Uh, so, uh, for the context, the first uh, hypothesis, this emerging hypothesis of decline of West, but of course now is um, changing, is controversial, and whether uh, there is a real decline of West and the rise of emerging powers. So here I quoted this uh, from American colonists. Uh, we are now living uh, through the third great power shift of the modern era. The first was the rise of Western world around 15th century. The second, the rise of the United States in 19th century is now the third called the rise of the rest. Uh, in other contexts, impacts of some crisis, some ongoing crisis, I think you are familiar with, we, we do not have time for elaboration. So global financial crisis, European sovereign debt crisis, rise of China, or maybe threat of China, no, I'm not quite sure uh, what's your view on it. And the US tried to desperately maintain the, its world hegemony. EU tried to desperately avoid the collapse of the Eurozone and even the Union. A new scenario, is that maybe some so-called new normal of Chinese economy. This is a, a term by the, uh, from President Xi, Xi Jinping, uh, some slowing down of Chinese economy. So we are not so confident now, maybe, as uh, three years ago when uh, the EU and the US decided to uh, launch the, or start the negotiation for, for TTIP. Uh, and also whether China will have a middle income trap uh, and actually, over the past few months, uh, even during my visit, I heard a lot of bad news, a lot of um, bad data, uh, bad figures on Chinese economy. Uh, so maybe this is an uh, interesting moment to, to look at this issue. So, uh, and it's political, that is, uh, what's the importance for you in U.S. strategic thinking, a few years ago, some American economists coined the term G2, or China-America. Maybe a Ch Chinese government would not like to accept it. But now we are very comfortable with the so-called new type of great power relationship. China's, this is China's uh, expression, official expression. Uh, at the beginning, actually, we, we had thought that this can be applied to all the major powers including EU, UK. But now it seems it has become more and more inclusive, only refer to the relationship with the United States. Uh, so President Obama's Asian, Asia strategy, pivot to Asia, uh, European, uh, Ukraine crisis and its impact. So a lot of maybe conflicting trends or, or events in, in the international uh, political and, uh, and the economic relations. So next we come to the, uh, the story, the road to, to TTIP. TTIP actually uh, is not a new idea uh, in 1990s. I think it's, it has been a natural logic that means these transatlantic trans partners should have some closer relationships, relationship in, in trade, in, 
So in the 1990s, uh, at that time, the Spanish leader and the American leader proposed. So in 2007, some institutional development uh, emerged, uh, the Transatlantic Economic Council. Uh, however, uh, it has have not been a very has not been a very successful story. Uh, no major breakthrough uh, had been made by uh, 2012 or early 2013. Uh, a major barrier actually co comes from the European Union. Uh, in the so-called competitive interdependence, the, 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 that means the uh, trade relations between or economic relations between the Un United States and European Union. Uh, European Union uh, has uh, the advantage <coughs> of the commitment to that means the multilateralism. For European mm -hmm. Union, the WTO should be the cornerstone. Uh, maybe the United States tend to uh, have more super new liberalism or uh, liberalization of trade. So in the 1990s, the United States uh, started to build more and more FTAs, uh, big, bigger ones, the regional, the, the NAFTA, and a lot of FTAs in, in North America, in, in Asia. Uh, so at the beginning, the EU was reluctant to do that. That means that would co constitute some uh, challenge or threat to, to the primacy of, of the uh, WTO. Uh, however, gradually, under the economic pressure, maybe in uh, 2005 or 2006, at that, that time Commissioner uh, Mendelssohn, uh, he introduced a new strategy for trade policy in the European Union, global Europe. Maybe that sh indicated some shift towards liberalism and mercantilism in, in EU trade <coughs> policy. So in another, maybe this is also a, a factor, maybe impetus for, uh, for the move toward this TT, uh, TTIP. That was a stalemate and very disappointing development of WTO uh, as the major uh, institution for international trade. Uh, maybe Doha, I, could not, I cannot remember how many years we talk about Doha. However, the negotiations have never been concluded. It seems no promising. Uh, so uh, in, under this context, more and more FTAs, some bilateral uh, regional or even uh, plurilateral uh, agreements were, uh, have been concluded. Uh, the so-called proliferation of FTAs. Some uh, economists believe that now every country is undergoing a lot of negotiations. On average, maybe 12, uh, 10 uh, FTAs with other countries. Uh, or even EU participate in some plural arrangement that means uh, for, for facilitating trade in service industry. In so uh, th this is the why uh, these major countries try to seek some new arrangements beyond WTO or outside WTO. Uh, so finally, in at the end of 2012, EU and the United States decided to move on. Uh, ten, in June 2013, EU US officially declared to stop to start the negotiations. So far, seven rounds of negotiations have been conducted. Uh, the eighth one, I think, is underway currently for some details on, on regulatory issues. Uh, but it seems that the, now the negotiations uh, are disappointing, not so uh, smooth. Uh, EU and the US uh, had hoped to conclude the negotiations uh, by the end of 2014, but obviously not likely, not possible. Uh, now for the, this September or this October, because some believe that Negotiations should be concluded before the U.S. general election. I mean, in case the Republican win, maybe the chance is very slim now for 
maybe the danger risk for, for, the, for this, uh, but it seems it's not very likely to, to conclude the negotiation. A lot of uh, different uh, differences in, in, in some regulatory, particularly in some regulatory issues. Uh, obviously, the TTIP has a huge advantage. Uh, some think tank in Europe made some report. Uh, it boosts the growth. Uh, obviously, this is an unprecedented FTA, large market in, in human history. Uh, the total GDP may account for maybe less than 40% of, of the world. Uh, investment trade accounts for maybe about 60%. Percent uh, more imp employment. Employment. It will be a zero tariff. Uh, that means remove the tariff and uh, maybe most of the non-tariff barriers for for trade. Uh, of, of course, it's a good thing. Uh, but there are some barriers, some constraints. Agriculture, obviously, the CAP, CAP, uh, international climate change regime, clean energy. Food safety, maybe the uh, European Union, for example, have, has maybe strict rules on, on this. Uh, even cu cultural uh, industry, the famous, maybe the, the French, uh, varies <coughs> over the, uh, maybe the Hollywood film dominance over from actually 20 or 30 years ago, they, they wage a war, a battle against the, the the uh, the influence of American films, uh, but now it's still an issue. Uh, so the prospects, maybe a full success or a partial, maybe this is a likely result. Um, successful on tariff issues, but with some compromises on regulator regulatory issues. Uh, a failure is also possible, but uh, maybe it involves huge. Uh, political and, uh, and economic risk because uh, to both sides invested a lot. Uh, it will weaken the uh, the confidence in. So, so a parallel story is called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's actually another one, uh, another efforts for uh, free trade uh, agreements dominated by the United States including 12 uh, Pacific countries, Japan, uh, Singapore, or even Vietnam. So it's very controversial, that means whether uh, this, is, uh, this or TTIP or TPP are economic or political. Uh, for United States and, and the European Union, they argue it's mainly Officially, you know, they argue it's mainly economic, only for, for trade, for growth, uh, for job. Uh, but some observers believe both TTIP and the TPP are exclusive of third countries like, like China. Uh, of course, some other concerns may be better position EU member countries for the rise of uh, Asian challenges, uh, helping EU out of crisis. Uh, and also has the prospects of sustaining Western leadership over the global uh, trade system, or f from European Union perspective, maybe it can uh, have the function of uh, diversion of the U.S. pivot to uh, to Asia. Uh, in a you know, Financial Times article, I also argue that the central objective of the uh, Trans-Pacific or TTIP <coughs> trade negotiations is the uh, exclusion of China. That is to build anyone but China club. Uh, because obviously China cannot join uh, the TTIP, but some people argue that uh, TPP is open to China. Uh, however, Chinese government refused to join the negotiations for, for TPP, but would prefer finalizing the Doha, uh, Doha run with WTO and establishing more or less inclusive uh, plurilateral, bilateral, or regional trade agreements. Uh, so next I will give very brief I'm conscious of, time of the uh, responses from Chinese scholars or think tanks. Well, recently, uh, 
Chinese government stress the importance of think tanks in, in decision making. Uh, so uh, Chinese scholars' view on TTIP, T TPP is divided. One camp regards it as Western geopolitical strategy to dominant international rules and norms and isolate China. I, I read some report uh, from uh, some leading think tanks in China. They, they give this view. Uh, they even said that it was the total political geopolitical project. That means the, it's a huge threat to, to China. Actually, the Chinese government was very concerned about development in uh, early 2013. A lot of discussion, internal discussions on, on the impact of, of this kind of uh, move. So the other camp is root, root, uh, rooted in economics, particularly China's recently announced reform projects. Their view is that TTIP and TPP can be used as an external impetus to drive domestic economic reforms in much the same way as WTO accession uh, was 20 years ago. Uh, the middle ground, this is also my view. In, in my paper, actually, I, I wrote this. That is, the uh, TTIP and TTP is definitely not purely economic, but the possibility exists between China and the West for making dialogue and building a consensus on international norms and rules. Both China and the West have the dual identity of both challenger, revisionist, and defender of existing international rules and norms. Uh, so uh, for some IR international relations uh, scholars, they tend to believe China is a challenger, is a revisionist for existing uh, maybe international order, or uh, international norms and, uh, and the rules. But of course, obviously we have different views and uh, maybe China is becoming more and more aggressive in, in recent years, more assertive. Uh, however, in uh, international trade norms and the rules, it seemed to me that actually uh, the Western countries, the United States and the European Union actually are trying to revise, uh, revise trying to change the, the system. Uh, for example, in uh, maybe in the existing rule of WTO, actually uh, no quite clear rules on exchange rate, on environmental issues. So uh, maybe or, uh, the Western countries actually are trying to insert such rules. China actually have benefited hu hugely from the existing system over the past decades, so maybe we, we just try, try to preserve the status quo. Uh, but also, some other observations, China and other emerging powers are too big to be isolated. Uh, that means no one can ignore the existence. That means the, even though uh, the TTIP is successful, uh, the United States and the EU cannot dominate the, the rules. Uh, China needs to uh, actively participate in agenda setting and the rule making in the new global and the regional order. Uh, this does not necessarily mean a zero sum game between China and the West, uh, as uh, some other scholars suggested. Actually, this is also opportunity even for China to uh, modernize our governance, to uh, adopt some rules, actually some even some Western rules, but we have to take into account our own interests. That means this is again a consensus, uh, consensus building process uh, in climate change, in clean energy, uh, in or even food safety. Uh, not necessarily, not necessarily means something bad. So uh, China's responses, uh, some maybe as I said, maybe this. Um, not necessarily responses directly uh, related to, to TTIP, uh, but uh, obviously uh, for China, uh, we st believe that the Euro in this context, the European Union is a ve very valuable partner. Uh, so we hope to strengthen our relations with the European Union. Over the past two or three years, we have had several uh, uh, reports. Uh, of course, a general agreement or general uh, document, uh, 
general paper, policy paper, what was called the China EU 2020 Strategic Agenda for Cooperation, this bilateral uh, paper. Uh, we are also trying to conclude the negotiations for comprehensive EU China investment agreement. Uh, China is very keen for a joint feasibility study on China EU free trade agreement. Of course, this is a very difficult task, very ambitious. But anyway, uh, last uh, spring, EU agreed in principle to start the, the study uh, on the feasibility of, of a comprehensive FTA between EU and China. Uh, the last one is the rescue for Greece. This new story I added on, on the road on my, during my trip because yesterday to to Banga to to Wales yesterday because I um, find found the news. I mean, Chinese Premier made a phone call to to great leaders to promise to to give some support. Uh, I this remind me of some discussion uh, one years ago, maybe at at the end of 2013 or early. Uh, some of the Chinese think tanks, actually, they uh, said that they felt very regretful for Chinese government to not to rescue Europe in the second half of 2011. I mean, they believe Chinese government could or should have done more in the most difficult times of European Union uh, in 2011. Uh, however, at that time, some uh, invest, investment banks in China uh, give some opinion to the Chinese government. Uh, I are scholars, I mean, international relations scholars persuade the Chinese government to, to do more. Uh, the investment, investment bank were very uh, pessimistic about the future of Europe. They said the euro, euro would collapse. If you buy uh, the bonds, maybe you lose a lot of money. So, uh, so but anyway, this time China, Chinese government indicated uh, but also, actually, Greece has very good relations with the Chinese government. Uh, the previous government uh, agreed to, to give consent for Chinese to invest in, in, a, in a port. This is, the Chinese government is very happy about that. Uh, so, uh, the second one is so-called the, the road and the belt strategy. This is a new buzzword of Chinese government. Everybody in China, even in university, that means universities are uh, encouraged to become think tanks now in China. So everybody talk about uh, so-called road and, and the belt. Road means the Silk Road. I think you know Silk Road? Yes. It's an icon in history in uh, Han Dynasty, Tang Dynasty, uh, for trade with Central Asia, Arabian countries. Uh, so we use that. Uh, so that is the uh, uh, Silk Road Economic Belt, refer to uh, the uh, Central Asia, uh, the Arabian countries. Maybe interesting is w which will be the uh, end point of, of this belt. Maybe uh, Italy, Rome, because in history, Greece, Ro uh, Italy, uh, it was the end point or even uh, Berlin, Germany. But anyway, no, uh, and also actually the Central and Eastern European countries are very interesting. So no matter whether the Western power, uh, European countries, UK would be part of that, um, if some Central and Eastern European countries uh, join this process, maybe this will have some impact on European Union because you have the free trade area, you have the Union, or even a full, very advanced economic and, and the monetary uh, Union. Uh, so the other one is called the Maritime Silk Road, uh, the, the Southeast Asian islands. Uh, this is a... Mm. So the strategy, I think it's in 20... Uh, in October 2013, President Xi made the official proposal initiative for, uh, for this uh, strategy. Uh, so it means, of course, mutual benefits, uh, solution to Chinese over maybe production, maybe over production or over capacity in some way. This is now our problem in, in this recent story. Uh, and uh, some new financial institutions in Asia or BRIC countries. 
connectivity, this is a key word. It can mean uh, different things. Actually, in the United States, several years also had such a strategy, so-called the Silk Road. Uh, connectivity can mean uh, internet, or can also mean uh, some uh, training for understanding, for, for so that means a connection in uh, different, in different ways. It can mean building of infrastructure, this is the most important part maybe. Infrastructure, the roads, airport, uh, the, yes, the high speed train, this is another interest of China. We believe we have a good technology, so we can invest, we have money, we have the technology, we have the, uh, the labor, so uh, that's the, uh, and also the, the cultural connections, the so-called people-to-people -people exchange. Uh, so another related story is uh, the APEC summit last year. It, it was uh, an event in, in, in China. We, we, we had several days extra uh, holidays in Beijing. Blue skies. <laughs> yeah. skies. Blue skies. So, uh, yes, this is the uh, revitalizing the APEC. That means the, we give new importance to APEC and the regional cooperation uh, because over the past two de one decade, at least, uh, in Chinese strategic thinking, APEC was marginalized. Actually, we didn't like APEC because too much American and Japanese influence in, in APEC. But this time, mm -hmm. we we took this opportunity of the summit. We reassert our influence, and uh, other countries actually are very, all the other members, including the United States, are very supportive. <laughs> they give what we, we want to. Uh, so, uh, yes, the, uh, we, again, another uh, F, uh, FTAAP, another free trade agreement. Uh, so, uh, this again was, is not a new idea. Uh, the relevant country talked about for many years. However, it's very difficult for, for these APEC countries for, for free trade agreement. Uh, no progress for many years. This time, Chinese government officially gave the uh, initiative for promoting this, this process, and all the other countries agree. Uh, so this is collective strategic studies. Now this is an APEC declaration. Uh, but obviously this is a very difficult task maybe you know, for foreseeable future. It's not likely to happen. But anyway, uh, these countries show their, their will uh, to start the, the process. Uh, and also, actually, it could include the TTIP, uh, TPP and some other regional. Uh, it's a bigger project. This is also what Chinese uh, government would like to see. <laughs> uh, so uh, some other things. Uh, we are accelerating the negotiations for more bilateral FTAs. We have had FTA with ASEAN countries. We had the FTA with Switzerland. Uh, it's on Euro with the European country. Uh, and also before the uh, the APEC summit, we declare that we almost concluded our negotiations with Korea, with Australia, faster than most people have ex had expected. Uh, so another is the, the this uh, photo. This is a new type of great power relationship. We uh, believe that this is very important. Uh, this is another gesture during the, uh, following the APEC summit, uh, during his visit to China, President Obama uh, and President Xi Jinping announced both countries will curb greenhouse gas emissions over the next two decades. The United States would cut its 2005 level of carbon emission by 26 to 28 percent before the year 2025. China would peak our carbon emission by 2030 and we will also aim to get 20% of energy from zero carbon emission sources 
the same year. The first time China, this is very important, but of course, some uh, critics still argue that it's only uh, maybe a utopian plan because maybe United, U.S. Congress would not support this, this kind of uh, agreement. This is only a gesture. Uh, however, anyway, in, in history, this is the first time uh, the United States gave a very clear target for the reduction, and the China promised to have a, have a peak for emission. Because our previous view has long been uh, that uh, we can cut emission, but we cut emission by the, uh, maybe per a unit of GDP. We could cut emission by 20, 40 or 50 percent by per unit of GDP, but over the, for example, 10, eight or 10 years, but because of high growth uh, in the GDP, so the total emission would still increase by, mm. by 50 percent. So uh, this is uh, uh, maybe the first time. And also, the two countries claim our leadership. This is not a good thing for the European Union because the European Union believes it's a leader in the world. Um, but the United States and China said we, we are the leaders, even in, in climate change. Uh, so the lastly, maybe uh, China is trying to, to deepen our domestic reform agenda. Uh, we established some so-called FTZ, not European, uh, sorry, free trade, free trade zones. Uh, to, uh, be, uh, that means the, some domestic free trade areas uh, for some experiments in, in different policies to open further to outside the world. Uh, in Shanghai or some other countries now, are very, and other cities, other provinces are very interested. Uh, it seems that Fujian, Guangdong, Tianjin, has have, uh, get, got the support from the government more applying for, uh, for this kind of experiment. Uh, it, the Chinese government believes that it's very important for us to have a grand strategy to address the challenges, to best plan and coordinate the domestic and the external strategies. So this is my, my report. Thank you. Thank you very much.